The New York Mets have declared bankruptcy after building the most expensive team in baseball history last season, and my job is to take them from absolutely nothing to the World Series in five seasons. I traded our entire team away, so we have C potentials at every position, and right now we're only paying our players $12 million and beats the $350 million they were spending before. It's opening day, and I have no idea what to expect from this team, but this is actually going to be a base hit, as the first baseman can't field it cleanly, and it goes out of play, but I don't think this one's going to get through, as the shortstop makes a great play. Our ace Braxton Garrett's going up against his former squad and that's not a good start as they're already on base but we strike out Luis Arise and Berger's out with two gone but we strike him out. No one has scored in the third inning and Willie Castro's looking to change that driving this one deep and he gets our C potential squad on the board first. Braxton Garrett's clearly mad at Miami for trading him to the cheapest team in the league because he's dominating and has a shutout through four innings. He's definitely the reason we're winning this game as our offense has not been spectacular but it would be really nice to add another run but it looks like that's not going to happen as we just get underneath this one. And Garrett gave up his first run of the game, so it's only a two-run game, and Ryan Jeffers is taking this one the other way, as there's two outs, but maybe we're finally rallying with this single from Velasquez, and we need a big play with two runners on, but we fold under pressure. Our offense may be an issue, as Garrett's in trouble, but he's ahead in the count against Soler and gets the strikeout. We really need to wrap this one up, because our bullpen's hot garbage, but we've been in a huge offensive slump ever since that home run, as someone finally got another hit, but getting on base has really not been the problem, and scoring the runners that have gotten aboard has been the biggest challenge for us today, and we just got very lucky that he dropped that ball, because that would have definitely been a double play, as Jeffers got a hold of this one into the left center gap, and that two RBI double extends our lead. That was the cushion our bullpen desperately needed, as we were able to pick up a huge win on opening day. That win got us off to a hot start, as we stand alone at 4-0 in the division, but we can't stay unbeaten forever, and we're being tested against another playoff team in the Brewers, as that's a base hit to start the game. It's really important we get off to a hot start in this this one because I don't know how stable our pitching staff is and Matt Walner comes up in the clutch to score our first run. Patrick Bailey is actually a really good player to have in this spot because he rakes against lefties and he's going to do it again, dribbling this one up the middle to score Walner. Our offense slowed down and we're trying to end another inning, but that was not where he was supposed to leave that pitch and Rowdy Telez just tied the game. We need to answer here, but we haven't gotten a hit since the first inning and it's amazing how that one hit seemingly gave Milwaukee all the momentum as we need our pitcher to settle back in, but that's clearly not going to happen and to make things worse, Big Rowdy's up once again, and he really gets a hold of this one, but thankfully it's not going to leave the yard. We caught a huge break last inning, but we're running out of time, and if we want to stay undefeated, we need to refine a spark, and this looks like one of our better hits, but Owen Miller has no power. Our pitching has been more than good enough, aside from those two runs, as we keep forcing ground outs, and this season may not be as bad as I thought if this is our worst starter, but the overall lack of power in our lineup remains my biggest concern, and here's Bailey's second hit of the game, as this 2-2 tie is killing me, and I'm really trying to break it, as this one's going to bloop for a while and eventually drop for a single. This could be our chance to go back on top and that curveball gets away from the catcher. So we have two in scoring position, but he blew that fastball right by me. Both teams have refused to break this tie, but that slider was left over the plate and Milwaukee finally pulls in front. We were punished for leaving two runners on base last inning, so we're trying to redeem ourselves. We're only in game number five and I'm already dreading not having more powerful bats in the lineup and we go scoreless again. Our pitching gave us plenty of chances to stay in this one, but we were unable to rally in our first loss of the year. Remember to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this one. We've been in a lot of close games early on in the year, as the Padres are looking to close us out, but Miller hit this one very well, going back deep to center field, but he continues to not have enough power, as the runner couldn't even advance to third, and the Padres close it out. We're looking to rebuild our confidence, and there's no better team to do that against than the Oakland days, as their outfielder just completely whiffed on that one to give us a free double. That was a very lucky break for our team that's gonna allow us to score this run off of the single from Owen Miller, who's definitely one of the more more interesting players on this team, but absolutely no power as a first baseman. We have an early lead, but Oakland just tied the game, and it's kind of funny that these two teams are the cheapest in baseball, since these two teams are very evenly matched at this point, but Walner's gonna get a hold of this one, and he's one of the only players we have that hits for any power as we retake the lead. It's been a good year for Ryan Jeffers, and he's gonna continue it, hitting this one the other way, to hit this one into nearly the same spot as Walner did to score him from first base. We already have two runs in this inning, and haven't even recorded an out, as this is just getting embarrassing as this one's going to the right field wall again except this time Butler's gonna collide with the wall and the ball bounces the other way for an RBI triple. Our offense woke up the moment that I compared them to the Oakland A's and they're really out to prove that money ball still works because this game is really starting to get out of hand and that's another RBI. So Owen Miller's back up and I'm gonna count on his 99 clutch grade every single time. We won this game in dominant fashion to sweep the A's. As to my surprise we're only one game below 500 after the first month. It's not super impressive 
but I'll definitely take it considering I traded my entire team for a $12 million payroll. But a huge loss to Atlanta shows us that we have a long way to go. Our season's starting to unravel and it doesn't help that every player on the team is C potential as we're in danger of being closed out by Colorado. A double put runners at scoring position and Ryan Clifford's gonna walk this one off with a no doubter to the foul pole as we have our first signature win of the entire video, raising our confidence and we've at least kept our season alive. But on paper, our offense has left a lot to be desired. But with the exception of our five starter, our rotation has not been bad. We've been fighting to stay at 500 and we're down one against the Astros, but not for long as this missile into right field is gonna score the tying run. And we still have a runner in scoring position with Miller up, but he's gonna pop out. So our pitching can send this one to extras, but Altuve had other ideas, slamming the door on our comeback attempt with his walk-off home run. And just after we had our signature win, that's a tough loss to swallow. June was a pretty rough month for us as we're sitting at 42 and 47. I think Bailey Ober was our only all-star across the board and he needs to have a big day against the Dodgers, but he's not off to a good start as he was having some trouble hitting the plate, but redeemed himself against Rosario. But he's still gonna find himself in trouble as JD Martinez drives this one into right field and thankfully it's not gonna score a run. Having juiced bases in the first inning is not ideal as he's gonna miss his spot again and Max Muncy delivers a two-run double. This is not a good showing for us against a playoff team as Jeffers becomes our first runner aboard, but we need to score him if we even want a chance to come back in this one as Nelson Velazquez gets a hold of this one deep to left center field and I don't think that one's gonna stay in the yard as we cut into their lead. That was a good answer and this ball's hit well, but right to the left fielder so we couldn't continue our rally, but we had another chance as Willie Castro turns on this one and this line drive home run is gonna make it a one-run game. We've scored three unanswered runs as Geraldo Perdomo is gonna extend his hit streak to 17 games to get aboard with two outs as Walner's gonna elevate this one to left field, sending Martinez on a chase, but this one's gonna get down and the tying run scores. I can't believe we tied this game and it really feels like we have all the momentum in the world, but there's a home run from JD Martinez and I really hope Ober's not starting to collapse, but he gives up a three run shot. It only took a few seconds for our comeback to be completely ruined as that game reminded us we're not ready to contend, but turning this team into a winner is gonna be very hard because I'm only allowing myself to trade for players on the trade block. This isn't a super good selection, but Jake Fraley's a player that really intrigues me as he's absolutely raking this year. So I'm absolutely gonna make this deal. I'm really wondering what the Reds want for Ellie De La Cruz because we could really use a potential superstar and we don't even have anything to trade for him. It's funny that our team's so bad that we can't even find a trade package for a player, but I think AJ Puck's a player I'm really interested in and it's only gonna cost one starting pitcher to get him. I think Jaron Duran would be a big upgrade at center field and I'm willing to give up whatever I need to make this work and I think this is gonna be a deal. Those trades already greatly improve our team as we already have three B potential players, but getting a reliable fifth starter is still on my priority list and I can't stop thinking about the idea of adding Casey Mize to this team. And it actually looks like it's not gonna take much as I'll throw in our current five starter and this random left fielder to get this deal done. And I was really hoping our changes would show up in the next game as this is Casey Mize's first start on the mound. I think Jaron Duran can be a big difference maker and he's gonna single on his first pitch with the Mets as we're trying to score the first run of this game. And that was a great play by the second baseman to deny Jake Fraley. We're still tied at zero, but Matt Walner gets going with this blooping single. And it seems like our offense never delivers with runners on base as another opposite field blooper is gonna drop as we're in prime position to score the first run of the game. And with two outs, Owen Miller comes through in the clutch, hitting this one up the middle to help us go up one to nothing. As we have a chance to add some more runs and Jeffers smokes this one for a single. And Willie Castro's out with two outs, but he's gonna get under this one to pop it up. It's still one nothing, but Casey Mize has been on a roll. But we definitely need our offense to figure it out as Matt Walner hits into a double play. And it seems like all of our big plays come with two outs as this one's heading for the left center gap, but Robert's just too fast and tracks it down. Mize is already looking like our best pitcher and he's definitely earned his spot in the rotation as hopefully our offense can get something going. I thought Nelson Velazquez could be one of our best hitters this year, but he's just left a lot to be desired. Casey Mize deserves all the credit if we win this game as Bailey just came off the bench and doubled, which will bring up Willie Castro and he's gonna dribble this one up the middle as it just barely gets through and scores the second run of the game. It's the trade deadline and really my last chance to make improvements to the team this season. And I just keep coming back to Ellie De La Cruz because he should not be here. And I'm wondering how much it will take if I throw in a backup shortstop and that's actually pretty close. I feel like I just need to throw in a starting pitcher and somebody else to get this done. So there's Zach Little and Oviedo and that's gonna get it done for Ellie De La Cruz. And he's definitely a guy that can develop into a young superstar we need. Just for fun, we're gonna go for it. So we got our superstar in Ellie De La Cruz, but we had a lot of draft picks as well as this was one of the deepest classes I'd ever seen across the board. So we had a lot of players to pick from. We're testing our team against the Atlanta Braves, but we're already down one nothing. So now we have two runners in scoring position and the sacrifice fly is gonna be deep enough to tie the game, but there's still plenty of time. It would be great
great to score another run before the end of the inning, and Corey Jolks hits this one deep into left field for the lead-taking double. But the Braves' offense answered with two runs as Perdomo's going yard, and this will tie the game if it stays fair, but it's not going to. We were just early on that one, but at least it's going to help us welcome Jake Fraley to New York as he hits a home run of his own. And this series is tied at one game apiece, so a win would give us the series win over a very good team in Atlanta, as here's an automatic double, and we have two runners in scoring position, and it would be nice to score them, but I think Velasquez just popped this one up, except it's going to keep going into left field for a three-run homer, as we really poured it on, and Jake Fraley is going to keep it coming with home run number two on the game, as we have another three-run shot and get a huge series win. We definitely don't have a shot at the playoffs, but that really wasn't the expectation, as we were just trying to find this team's identity, and we're closing out season number one, and a 74-88 and 88 record really isn't bad. The biggest challenge in this rebuild is that I'm not allowing myself to spend over $10 million on any player, so obviously that means that these top guys are going to be out of the equation. But I do think we're bringing in some good players as we're giving Lucas Giolito about $8 million a year. We're replacing Brian Wu, so I'm trying to find him a trade partner and the Cardinals really make a lot of sense because they don't have a lot of pitching and I think Brendan Donovan's a fair return for him and he has very good stats. We won opening day last year, but we're a much better team this year, so I'm hoping for good things against the Mariners as this one's going to bloop and our new acquisition Brendan Donovan has his first hit. Getting some runs in the first inning would boost our confidence, but I really didn't need to swing at that and it's a double play. Braxton Garrett's making his second straight opening day start, and he's going to turn a double play of his own. So it's 0-0 after one inning, but Willie Castro gets the first extra base hit of the game, and Owen Miller's up with his 99 clutch, but he hits it right at Crawford. This team is very different than it was at the beginning of last season, as we've already added so many new players, and one of them's blasting a double. And Perdomo hits this weak grounder that's going to get through the infield, and Duran has the speed to score. We signed Harold Ramirez late in the offseason, and he's going to collect his first hit in the fifth, and while Kirby settled down after that run, we get a second man aboard, bringing up Brendan Donovan, who's always one of my favorite players to trade for in franchise, but he can't get this one to draw. It sucks that we missed that scoring opportunity, but Braxton Garrett's been on an absolute roll to buy our offense some more time against a good pitcher in Kirby, but Willie Castro just hit this one really hard for a double, as Owen Miller has another chance to drive in some runs, but once again, he fails to do it. I'm getting really sick of these close games, and we're really lucky Braxton Garrett has a shutout through seven. Seattle's in their bullpen, so hopefully this is a better chance to score some runs, and since we're facing a lefty, I wanted to try out one of our brand new free agent acquisitions and he's not going to disappoint picking up a three run pinch hit home run to make this a four nothing game and Owen Miller's finally going to score a runner in scoring position and back to back home runs help us start our season off with a win. It took us some time but our offense showed off their potential and we're on a roll early on starting the season off nine and two going into this game against the Braves and Perdomo starts this one off with an absolute rocket of a double. We had a really tough time scoring runners in opening day but we're going to introduce Atlanta to Rake Fraley who's entering his second year with the team, as he's going to make this another one nothing game, but I really don't want to play another close game, so Matt Walner is going to go deep to score another. We need as many runs as we can afford against this Braves team, and I don't know what it is, but our rotation has been absolutely dealing this season, and Harold Ramirez is going to double. We're taking our division rivals to school, and we need to avoid a double play here, but it's not going to happen, as Matt Olson just made an awesome play, and there's a chance for Atlanta to get back in this, but they're not going to, but I really want some insurance runs here, and Brendan Donovan's going to get us started, as they've already turned to their bullpen in the sixth, and this is the deepest blooper I've ever seen, but I think it's going foul, but it's going to stay fair, and we have the easiest double of our life. Our offense has looked alive ever since that Mariner game, as we have another run and another dominant win. Early on, it seems like we've already built one of the best teams in baseball, but we hit a bit of a losing skid to fall to 18 and 13 after a month, but our stats show that our offense has been pretty good, as we have five players above 800 OPS, so I think I just have to trust things to turn themselves around, as we're looking for a rally against Arizona, and are going to need two runs if we want to steal the win, but our comeback's off to a good start in the eighth. There's still zero outs and plenty of time to score these runners, and Perdomo's gonna do exactly that on this blooping single to score Ramirez, bringing up Brendan Donovan, and it only took a few batters to erase their lead. This is the level of offense we've been used to seeing, as a wild pitch is gonna be what gives us the lead, and the Diamondbacks just pulled off one of the biggest chokes I've ever seen. We're fighting for a wild card spot and are about to be closed out by the Padres, but here's Jake Fraley, and he's gonna score one run to tie the game, and the winning run's coming around all the way from first to take the lead. This game and the Diamondbacks game show us that we have the offense to make these type of comebacks, and that's made the difference this season. I jumped into another close game just to see if we can come back again, and Castro got a hold of this one, and that is a three-run blast, as we simply cannot be stopped in these late-game situations. We're the clutchest team in baseball just one season after filing for bankruptcy, and we're in firm lead of the first National League wildcard spot. I don't think anybody was expecting us to be a playoff team this early in the season, but our guys have really pulled their weight, and we've been doing all this without top prospects
prospect Ellie De La Cruz, who needs some more time to develop in AAA, but guys like Brendan Donovan, Geraldo Perdomo, and Rodolfo Castro have been so good that we don't really need him yet, but he's going to provide a big boost in September. We're 55 and 35 at the All-Star break, and I was curious if we had anyone make the game this year, and sure enough, Michael Rodriguez, our closing pitcher, made it, and it's well-deserved as he's one of the better stories on our team, being picked up in free agency in season number one. We're down one run coming out of the All-Star break, and Fraley's going to pop this one up deep to right field, which is going to allow the runner to get to third base, and while we've been in these positions before, it's a little tougher against playoff teams like the Brewers, but we score the tying run. Two sacrifice flies wasn't the prettiest way to tie the game, and I'm looking to extras, but they just ended the game in one swing. We were finally on the other side of one of those losses, as we're tied for the wild card, and our 12 games back of the Braves, going into another game with them that Ryan Jeffers is going to get going with a double, as we dominated Mike Soroka last time, and this single is going to score the first run. Another win against Atlanta would boost our confidence going into August, as there's another RBI, and we continue to be Mike Soroka's worst nightmare as Donovan joins in on the fun to score another. This is the exact type of performance we needed coming out of the break as there's an Owen Miller no doubter and the bat flip to make it 5 nothing. However, we may have a big lead but we can't count out the Braves, but thankfully the Lucas Giolito signing's paying off. We're looking to put this game out of reach in the 7th inning and I think this RBI double from Ryan Jeffers is gonna get that done as we never even gave them a chance and a huge win for us. We improved our team with two trades but we're still losing to teams like the Tigers but thankfully the sack fly is gonna tie the game. However, the Tigers would answer with another run, but Corey Jolks got a hold of this one, sending it deep into right field, taking the outfield way back to the wall, and it just barely stays in the yard. A walk-off home run would have been nice, but I think it was in the script as newcomer Noel V. Marte was able to end this one. It would be very hard for us not to make the wild card this season. As we get our draft results back, and I'm actually a little bit disappointed because I thought Randy Nix was for sure going to be a generational talent, but he's only an 89 potential, and while it's cool to see some guys with potentials in the 90s, they have such low overalls that they're probably not going to play in this entire rebuild. So aside from Knicks, I think I'm actually most excited about a player the computer drafted for me in Ken Caps because he has 78 walks per nine and looks like a pretty good bullpen arm. It's September, so it's time to bring Ellie De La Cruz back to the majors, and it's fitting that his first game backs against his former team, but he's not going to get a hit. We're going to really need him to play well if we want to make a playoff run, as we're in extras against the Dodgers in a game that could be a postseason preview. We just need one more out and we can go to the next inning, but this one's going to be blooped down the right field line as we're trying to get over there and this is going to be a very tough way to walk this one off. We're tied with the Padres for the first wild card spot but they've won three games in a row and it's not looking certain so we could really use this walk off win against the Atlanta Braves and that's a good start from Jake Fraley as there's a lot of time and only one out as Walner hits this one through and this could be it as Fraley's rounding third heading for home as the throw comes in which is definitely going to be a close play and he is thrown out. That one was incredibly close and I really don't know how Murphy got him. We're in another extra inning game with a national League power, and at least this deep flyout's gonna allow our runner to tag from second. Bringing up Ellie De La Cruz, who still hasn't got a hit this season, and that's not gonna change, but this ball was hit more than deep enough to score the winning run. Ellie De La Cruz finally did something, and a win against the Marlins would secure us the first wild card, but we're going to extras again. If I die young, it's definitely gonna be from the stress of these extra inning games, but Jake Fraley's gonna deliver an early double, and another run would make me a very happy man, which Velasquez is gonna deliver. So we're officially going to the playoffs, and 94 wins is actually really Really impressive. The Braves finished with 109 wins as we were 15 games under them, and it's definitely no surprise as they had the top two finishers for MVP, and Spencer Strider was in third for Cy Young. The winner of this game would face them in the NLDS, and we got off to a hot start with a 4-0 lead, and we picked up a very easy win as we could sweep them in game two and hit a two-run bomb, and it looked like this game was gonna go exactly like the last one as we scored another run, which is really weird because I was expecting the Padres to put up more of a fight, and that's a Jake Fraley grand slam as we just won one of the easiest playoff series of my entire life, but I guess pitching wins championships and the Padres don't have any, so we move on to the NLDS, but we got absolutely schooled in game number one, and unfortunately game two would end the same way. This is our last chance to save the season, but things are not looking good, and Brendan Donovan's our last hope, but this terrible chase was a rough way to end the year. We made it this far with some C potential players and some young talent that's only gonna get better next season. This is the point in the rebuild where I would usually spend a lot of money on a big splash player, but obviously we can't do that, but I did find two guys to help us get over the hump. I also just found out that the Angels didn't offer salary arbitration to Mickey Moniak, and he can absolutely rake as he put up a 900 OPS this season and is definitely going to get added to the squad. But I'm not done this offseason, and I'm going to go out and get Brian De La Cruz from the Marlins. Our payroll was only 40 million last year, and now it's up to about 61 because we have a lot of guys going on arbitration, but this would still be the 25th lowest in Major League Baseball. These trades helped us close the gap on Atlanta as we were two and a half games back, and this series could decide the top spot. We tied the game
game with a home run, but Atlanta answered in a big way as Ozzy Albies hit a three-run shot, as this playoff rematch was not going our way, but here's Jaron Duran hitting a bomb to continue his breakout year, as Atlanta kept adding runs, so it was crucial that we kept up the pace, and we swung at this high pitch, which is gonna bloop into right field. This has been an electric high-scoring game, and there's a base hit from Moniak, but the runner has to hold it third, and it's up to Brennan Donovan to score a run, but he does the worst thing possible, grounding into a double play. So we're still down one run, but Ryan Jeffers just got a hold of that one, going deep into left field, and this single shot ties the game. I can't believe we came back after being down 6-1, to one, and that's a great play for Marcia, because that single would have given us the lead, but thankfully our bullpen kept this game tied, and Mickey Moniak's gonna single, giving Brennan Donovan a revenge opportunity, and he's gonna come through this time with a deep drive into right field that becomes a double but can't score Moniak, which means we need a big play from Ryan Jeffers, and that's exactly what we're gonna get as he singles up the middle to score two runs. This offense is far better than it was last year, and it helps us get a big win, as we were able to really get going in September after that, and won the division with 93 wins. I honestly feel like this is one of the best teams I've ever assembled with the constraints that we had in this video, and I think the craziest part is that I still haven't used our best overall player, Ellie De La Cruz, and the only reason he's still at AAA is because his overall is being inflated by his defensive stats, and he doesn't hit as well as the rest of our infield. We're taking on Milwaukee in the NLDS, and they have good pitching, but we already get a hit, and I really trust our offense after what we did to Atlanta as Fraley drives this one, but it goes right to the center fielder, so we miss a huge opportunity, and they're able to score a run, so I was once again worried about an early playoff exit as our offense really needed to get something going, but I know Corbin Burns won't won't make this easy, or maybe he will as Jake Fraley drives this one deep to center field, sending Mitchell all the way back to the wall, and it's gonna be caught. We've only allowed a run, but it seems like Burns wants to win this game all by himself, but Marte is gonna get aboard with a single, as the hits keep coming and they never seem to turn into runs, but this could be very different, as Jaron Duran sends this missile down the left field line where it's gonna stay fair, and score Marte from second to finally tie the game. We have a chance to extend our lead, and Jaron Duran just barely clips this ball, and thankfully it gets through the infield to score the leading run. So we have our first lead of the game and another blooper, this time into left field, is going to give us a two-run lead, which gives a lot of cushion for our bullpen, and Jake Fraley just called game. Beating Corbin Burns was the toughest challenge as we swept the Brewers and are off to a good start against the Dodgers, as we already have a runner in scoring position, but need Moniak to beat this one out, and he's not going to. We got swept in our second playoff series last year, so we need to get off to a strong start. We can't afford to leave runners on base as Ramirez just got smeared, so the bases are juiced for Noel V. Marte, and he waits patiently on the curve ball to drive in two runs. Nothing's going right for the Dodgers so far, and this wild pitch scores another run, and I think LA just wants to forget about that game, bringing us into game two, where we also have an early lead, and we just keep pouring it on in every inning, which is very impressive against an elite Dodgers team, and we would win game three, setting up a chance to sweep Los Angeles, and we needed our offense to come up big, but that was a great play from the shortstop. This is our last chance to score a run, and Jaron Duran's gonna let us last a bit longer, and we need to stay alive, but Perdomo breaks his bat on this, and it looks like we're gonna lose this game as Phillips throws the first, but it's not in time. That means that Jake Fraley has a chance to win it, and it's not gonna happen. I would have loved to hit a walk-off bomb to sweep the Dodgers, but we still have a 3-1 series lead, and Duran just hit a leadoff home run. That early run set the tone and was the first of 10 combined through the bottom of the seventh, and our offense is looking to take the lead in this back-and-forth game, and De La Cruz gets it done, which would help us punch our ticket to the World Series. We're taking on the Rangers in the World Series, and we're down two runs in the ninth inning, but O'Hearn's gonna try to make something happen, starting out the ninth with a double, and our offense has struggled all game long, but Ramirez singles to put runners at the corners. We have three outs to score a run, but Jeffers just grounded into a double play up the middle, bringing us to potentially our last batter as Marte hits this one up the middle, and it hits their pitcher, and he's running for first base, but the throw's gonna be in time to win Texas game number one. We cannot afford to fall behind two games, but Perdomo just turned on this one to break the 0-0 tie with a two-run blast, and we'd go on to get even in the series. We're down one in game three, but Marte is gonna get a single, and that brings up Jaron Duran, who's been on fire this postseason. However, there's two outs, so we really need to be careful, but Perdomo strikes again, going the other way to tie it up. Our pitching's held up ever since we allowed the first run, and we have a chance to really swing this game into our favor, as Jeffers is gonna do exactly that with this double into the right center gap. We have the lead and a chance to do much more, but Corey Seager just made a great play on defense, and this game would remain close in the ninth, as our all-star closer is trying to end this one, but Corey Seager just hit a double, as the inning is not off to a good start, and we'd get much worse as Adolis Garcia just lifted a two-run ball to take the lead for Texas. That was obviously not what I was hoping for, but thankfully Ryan Jeffers got a hold of this one, as we're gonna play the Uno reverse card with a ninth inning home run of our own. I can't believe we're in extra innings right now, but I'm really ready for this one to be over, as Donovan's gonna hit this one into the left center gap for an easy double, and that's definitely gonna be good enough to walk this 
one off as we take our first series lead and we also proceeded to win the next game. So we're trying to end this thing as we hit a fourth inning, no doubt grand slam to take the lead. However, Texas was not done and they were fighting to keep their season alive and they took the lead, but we're gonna strike right back with a Noel V. Marte double and Jaron Duran, who's been absolutely on fire in these playoffs is gonna score another one. This one's been back and forth all game long and Perdomo got a hold of another one, sending this to deep right field and what a perfect way for us to call game as we acquired a ton of players in this rebuild, but it's one of the guys from the original roster who made all the difference in the end as I bankrupted the New York Mets and won them a World Series in just three seasons. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this one. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe and click right here to see more of my content.